Well, I'm now going to talk about spinal cord gray matter, and our objectives are one, describe spinal cord gray matter, and we'll answer the questions, why is gray matter gray, and what are the three horns of gray matter, and what type of neurons do the horns contain? Second objective is to describe the cervical and lumbar enlargements by answering the question, why does the spinal cord swell in the cervical and lumbar vertebral regions? All right, so why is gray matter gray? To answer that question, we'll take a look at this uh, spinal cord within the vertebral column. We're going to take a cross section out so we can just focus on that spinal cord. And there we have some of the spinal cord looks gray and some of it looks white. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Now, why is it gray? Well, to answer that, let's take a look at a motor neuron. And so the motor neuron has that cell body, the big circle, and then the long, thin stem is the axon. And around the axon, we have myelin that forms a myelin sheath that helps to uh, insulate and also increase saltatory conduction. Myelin is white, and therefore when you have these long bunches of these axons surrounding a myelin, that part of the nervous tissue looks white. We call it white matter. And then the part that consists of cell bodies, dendrites, and synapses is really just gray matter because it's not white. So it's really off-white matter, so we call it gray matter. Therefore, gray matter is gray because it lacks myelin and is composed primarily of cell bodies, dendrites, and the synapses. Where in the spinal cord is gray matter located? Well, we take a look again at a cross-section, cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and sacral regions, and the gray matter is internally located that looks like a butterfly shape that's inside and then it's surrounded externally and peripherally by white matter. Gray matter is located internally in columns. All right, so why are the three horns, or what are the three horns of gray matter, and what type of neurons do the horns contain? So the gray matter is organized into three different horns. We have a ventral horn, also known as anterior horn, a lateral horn, sometimes known as an intermediate horn, and a posterior, or a dorsal horn, sometimes known as a posterior horn. So let's start with the ventral horn first. And the ventral horn houses somatic motor neuron cell bodies. So there is one somatic motor neuron cell body and the axon exits out and it goes and innervates skeletal muscle. And sometimes this cell body in the ventral horn and then the uh, axon that goes out is sometimes called the lower motor neuron because it's innervated by an ax a neuron that starts in the cerebrum and courses down to the ventral horn that's called an upper motor neuron. Um, also, that cell body we see in the ventral horn, we sometimes call these ventral horn cells. All right, now the lateral horn that we see there in red, that's going to house visceral motor neuronal cell bodies. And so there's a visceral motor neuron cell body, and the axon exits out the ventral root and goes and innervates viscera, glands, and organs. Um, the specific thing about this lateral horn or intermediate horn is that it's not located at every segmental spinal cord level. It's found between T1 and L2 spinal cord levels where all sympathetic neurons arise. And it's also found between S2 and S4 spinal cord levels where parasympathetic neurons arise. But we do not find lateral horn in the cervical region and in parts of the lumbar region as well. Okay, that's the lateral horn. And then our dorsal horn it's going to receive sensory neuronal input, both somatic and visceral. And so there we have a sensory neuron going in the dorsal root, and you see that cell body in the dorsal root ganglia, and it brings information into that dorsal horn. All right, so why does the spinal cord swell in the cervical and lumbar vertebral regions? Okay, so to answer that question, let's do as an analogy. Gray matter is like a bunch of lollipops. So there's that part that you're <laughs> mm, very tasty, and then you've got that little thing that comes down. So you got a big lolly head and a thin lolly stem. And remember when you collected some of these when you were kids and you buy them at stores and you have a couple and a few, and then you got a whole bunch of these lollipops. And so big lolly heads take up lots of room. Thin lolly stems do not. Gray matter is like a bunch of lollipops. You see a big lolly head and a thin lolly stem. Well, instead, it's a neuron. We have a big neuronal cell body and a thin axonal stem. And then we take that and superimpose it into a spinal cord. And you see that orange circle is the cell body of a neuron. But know that there is not just one cell body. It's like a bunch of lollipops. They take up room. So big neuronal cell bodies take up room. 
they determine how big the ventral horn becomes. And then those axon stems course out the ventral horn and ventral root to go innervate skeletal muscles. We now add the cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and sacral levels, recognizing the thoracic region, those ventral horn is supplying intercostal and abdominal muscles. Not a lot of dexterity. But look in the cervical region. Wow, there is a lot of cell bodies, so take up a lot of room because those axons are coursing out to innervate upper limb muscles through the brachial plexus, your biceps, your triceps, the forearm muscles, and especially all those intrinsic hand muscles for fine movement. Lumbar region, same thing. Lots of cell bodies because those axons are coursing to innervate lower limb muscles in the lumbar region, primarily hip flexors, quads, and adductors. And then the sacral level, we've got a bunch of cell bodies that are also going to lower limb muscles like your hamstrings and shin muscles and foot muscles. So, the take-home message, cervical and lumbosacral ventral horns are bigger than thoracic ventral horns because there are more motor neuron cell bodies to innervate limb muscles. In other words, more lolly heads are needed to innervate arm and leg muscles and lolly heads take up more space and therefore those ventral horns get really big. Let's take a look at that in another way. Here we have this spinal cord within the uh, vertebral column in a coronal section and we have a cross sections of the spinal cord on the right and if we take a look at those cervical levels they make a cervical enlargement because of how many between the C5 and T1 spinal cord levels how big those lolly heads become and then we take a look at the lumbar and sacral ventral horn they make another enlargement in the spinal cord we call the lumbar enlargement because it is in the part of the lumbar vertebrae it's the lumbar and sacral spinal cord that are enlarged, but because that conus medullaris ends between L1 and L2, the swelling occurs in that lumbar vertebral region. Therefore, enlargements of the spinal cord contain increased number of lower motor neuron cell bodies that supply upper for cervical enlargement and lower lumbar enlargement limb muscles. In review, gray matter is gray because it lacks myelin. Spinal cord gray matter consists of three horns. The ventral horn houses somatic motor neurons, lateral horn houses visceral motor neurons, and dorsal horn receives sensory information. And the cervical enlargement contains lower motor neurons for upper limb muscles. The lumbar enlargement contains lower motor neurons for lower limb muscles. Thank you.